This is a Fox News alert. Not long ago, President Trump fired acting Attorney General Sally Yates. She was a holdover from the Obama administration, and she refused to enforce his new immigration order. In her place, he has promoted Dana Buente of Virginia. One of the men at the center of this contentious immigration order is Stephen Miller, senior advisor to the president. According to some news sources, he is the very center of all this. He's here to tell us where exactly he stands in the White House. Stephen, great to see you. Good to be here. Thank you. So I first got to ask you about the news. Um, when did this happen? What does it mean? And tell us about the replacement. All right. So tonight we found out that an Obama appointee who was uh, confirmed in 2015 uh, was refusing to enforce the president's immigration order, defend the president's immigration order, and thus refusing to defend the Constitution and refusing to defend the country. It was a betrayal of her office and she's being replaced with somebody who will enforce the laws of the United States. Is that person Senate confirmed? Uh, no, it'll be an acting position. It was my understanding, and I, of course, could be wrong, have been before, but that in order to sign certain warrants, wiretapping warrants, for example, federal warrants, you need to have someone at the Justice Department with a Senate confirmation. Is that true, do you think? Well, there are many layers of people at the Justice Department who have been Senate confirmed. Okay. So there's plenty of leadership there who's been Senate confirmed. But the, and obviously Jeff Sessions will be there very soon as well. Right. And we'll all look forward to that very much. So um, this does break precedent. I mean, it's, I can't remember the last time anything like this happened. Doesn't mean it shouldn't happen, but it's not a common thing anyway. And well, it's, it's, critics it's, are going to say, well, yeah. wait a second. You know, if you get in the way, a Justice Department official gets in the way of what the president wants, gets canned, they're going to start invoking Nixon immediately. The, 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 what's unprecedented here is that the Justice Department would refuse to defend a lawful federal order for political reasons. That is dangerous to our constitutional system. Right. When, when somebody sues the government of the United States for doing its duty, the Justice Department is defending the taxpayers of the United States and defending the Constitution of the United States. Refusing to do that is, again, it's a betrayal of the office, and it is unconscionable to do so. And as you well know, Tucker, during the Obama administration, Order after order after order was issued that violated immigration law, that repealed immigration law, that pulled immigration law apart. And throughout all of that, the Obama Justice Department stood by and supported those unlawful actions. President Trump comes in and directs the agencies to follow the law as written and to protect the country, and the acting attorney general and Obama appointee says, I'm not going to do it. Are, are you confident the new acting attorney general will defend the president's executive order? I am. And as you understand, the core power of the federal government on immigration is its right to deny entry to any alien at any time if it believes that to be in the national interest and national security interest of the United States. Now, um, you have been identified in the media over the last, well, you've gotten an awful lot of press coverage in the last couple of days, and you've been identified. Almost all of it glowing. I would just... say none of it glowing. <laughs> but, but all of it flattering in the sense that you have been given credit, really, for, as the driving force behind these executive orders. Um, tonight, New York Magazine had a piece, and I'm reading the title, What is Stephen Miller's Job Anyway? So what's, what is your job anyway? Were you behind uh, I get, the executive I get, orders? I get a lot more credit than I deserve. Um, the immigration orders were drafted by a team of some of the most qualified, talented lawyers in the United States of America. I had the privilege, among many other staff at the White House, of being involved in the review process. But the review process also included the Office of Legal Counsel and the Justice Department. And, the, and, and many of those people who are careers, and presumably many of them who didn't support yes. President Trump, and they cleared it and approved it as fully legal. So many people were involved in it, but I am proud to have the opportunity tonight to stand up for President Trump's order and to defend that order as lawful, necessary, and important. And as you understand, the United States admits 80 million people a year as visitors into our country. The idea that we couldn't exercise even a small amount of uh, restriction to protect our country from people that we can't properly screen, that's the most basic exercise of federal authority. Should these orders apply to green card holders? Well, they, they actually do not restrict green card holders from returning to the country. The United States, if it wants to, can bar anyone from entering the country who is a non-citizen if it threatens the security of the United States, right. if there's right. cause for doing so. But in this case, green card holders have already been waved through and are continuing to be waved through. Okay, so there's no restriction on green card holders at all. The, the LA Times said you effect, quote, effectively ran the NSC principals meeting on Saturday. <laughs> there wasn't even an NSC principals meeting on Saturday to run. Again, I'm, I'm flattered by the suggestion, but I have never attended nor run a National Security Council meeting. So what is oh, that? Interesting, because they said it flat out. Uh, <laughs> right. And you're denying it flat out. 
What, so what, what is your, I mean, what would you say your purview is at the White House? My main responsibility at the White House is to advise on policy matters. There are a lot of people who have a lot of say in making those decisions. I'm just one voice. I'm blessed to have the opportunity to be a voice. Yes. But I think the more interesting thing tonight to discuss, the most important thing to discuss right now, is you and I and everyone listening tonight cares deeply about, is how do we keep this country from falling into the same trap that's happened to parts of Europe, to places like Germany, to places like France, where you have a sort of permanent intergenerational problem of Islamic radicalism that becomes a routine feature of life in those countries, yes. a new normal. Yes. How do we keep that from happening in America? If we don't change the way we think about immigration, if we don't change the way we screen and vet and approach the entry process, that will happen in the country. Yes. That is a certainty if we don't take strong action starting today. You are absolutely right on that. How not to become Sweden? I wish more people worried about that. Thanks a lot. Stephen Miller, that was really hey, interesting. Thank you. Thank you.